Secretary Ms. Susan, we have City Manager and City Attorney. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and the police are also Hello. present. <laughs> At this time, um, Vice Chair Ms. Nicastro, could you please introduce your board for roll call? Vice Chair. I'm Didi Gozian. Pauline Stickler. Holly Luce. And Zoe Shortman. Thank you very much. Welcome. And Laura Pucci. And you're, and who is it's there? my understanding, Ms. Pucci, that you are not an official member of the board. That oh, yeah, because your October had expired. So yeah. I do apologize. That's okay. We we're going to get to introduce I wasn't you thinking. in a moment. <laughs> I'm used to being on the board. So. At this time, Ms. Nicastro, if you could please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Go and please stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Commission, at this time we need an approval of the agenda. So moved. Oh, second. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Got a motion on the floor to approve the agenda by Commissioner Emmerich, seconded by Vice Mayor. We'll go ahead and take the vote. I would assume there's no comments. Seeing no, no ma'am. Go ahead and take that vote. I was paying attention. To and that passed time. three to zero. Um, Vice Mayor, do we have any public comment? We do not. Uh, City Clerk, do we have any virtual public comment? No. Thank you very much. All right. So at this time, we have a presentation um, for the go gopher tortoise sculpture. And that presentation would be given by Ms. Lori Pucci, who is a former member mm -hmm. of the... Is Am I allowed to ask if... Hang on one second. Who is a former member of the Art Advisory Board. Our normal protocol is 15 minutes for um, presentations. And then after the presentation, we'll ask questions and then open it up for discussion, okay? Okay. I was going to ask if we could switch the general business and the presentation, if that's possible, because the, the Go for Tortoise project is part of the strategic plan. But we don't have to if... Well, the agenda was that's fine. was approved that's as fine. it's presented. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so well, we can just I keep was it just, in mind. We can keep it no, in mind. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Right. So 15 minutes. Tell me when to start. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. So as part of our strategic plan, we have a bunch of projects that are in the works. As, and the Go for Tortoise project is the first one. We did talk about this last year approximately at this time. And um, this was one of the projects in our projected timeline that was approved. And so uh, we're moving forward with a little more information. So the Go for Tortoise project is a collection of small statues that would be placed around town. We would begin with um, presenting them out on the green. Our, our thinking was to have them at the same time as um, arts on the green. And I will get to that in just one moment. But for the initial cost, the statues cost $650 each. Uh, this is for 25 or more and includes the, um, the original casting, since they will be making a new um, statue for us because they're making a gopher tortoise. Um, the shipping is $3,365, and that would be for 25 to 50 sculptures. So if we wanted more, we could do that. This fee includes unloading assistance, as these sculptures are heavy, and it also include, includes artist assistance while they're in Northport and fine arts insurance for that day and for the, um, the shipping. Um, we are thinking to use, uh, to have $500 to be the artist stipend. This would be, um, allow the artists to um, create their own budget understanding that they're responsible for materials, statue pickup and return, and that the statue does remain the property of the city of Northport. And then a finish with a urethane clear coat, that would be to be, that is to be determined as we could have the artist do that, or we are also looking into possibility of having maybe um, a body shop or um, a place like that do a coat on all of them. That is um, yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. So that is the basic cost. 
we would have an initial investment of $32,115. Um, the project elements were we would create an event, like I said, where our plan is to hopefully do it along with Arts on the Green 2021. We would create a timeline for, you know, when the statues would arrive for certain events. Um, we would um, work on the logistics of ex acceptance and storage of statues because they would have to be stored somewhere um, with the city of Northport um, before pickup, after drop off, and things like that. Um, we would be looking into getting with the Chamber of Commerce and partnerships and sponsors, hopefully hoping that we would have $1,000 sponsors and this would defray some of the cost. And the car, call to artists, um, the details of what we would like um, the tortoises to be painted and um, all of the, the price, the cost, the budget, that would all be involved in the call to artists, which would need to be on the timeline as well. Okay. Um, this is not in the, um, the budget that I, the proposed budget that was presented, but these are also possible promotional activities and costs. Um, you, we could have a kickoff party, we could have an artist sponsors party, we could auction these off. Um, of course there is a cost to having an auction, but the whole idea of an auction is you, um, uh, make those funds back. We could have a parade. Again, we can do merchandising. We can have mini statues made, t-shirts, posters, postcards, and maps for the Gopher Tortoise Trail. None of these have been, um, we haven't fleshed out the pricing for these because we want to make sure that the project itself would be approved first. But these are all possible things, all of which or none of which can be part of this um, uh, project. Okay. So here is a size reference. I recognize that this is a frog, but they don't have a gopher tortoise. So this is a great size reference, as you can see, next to people. It also shows you the pad that the gopher tortoise would be a similar type of thing on. And it gives you two um, references of different artist variations. One is a more realistic, and the other is a much more whimsical. And this is very typical of this type of citywide project. Um, here is another. These are the blanks, and you see again, I there are people in here to give you a good size reference. So you see that they're not a tripping hazard. They're <coughs> large enough that they're going to be obvious, and um, yet small enough that they're unobtrusive to the environment. So they're fairly obvious, but at the same time, um, it's going to be quite easy to place them in different areas. Okay? And here is an example of a turtle that the company that I've worked with before and have asked for the um, quote from. Here is an example of a turtle that they have. However, this is not a gopher tortoise, as you can see. They will be making a gopher tortoise for us and um, will work closely with us. And of course, we would approve the design before anything happens. Okay? So this is one of the possible. Um, events that could go along with it, a possible parade that you show them, uh, show the tortoises going through town um, and maybe making their way to City Hall. We could have the parade just on, on the City Hall campus since we have that awesome um, walkway. Okay, oops, I just clicked out of something. All right, well, I clicked out of my other thing. <laughs> anyway, so the this was the present this was the project that we had talked about last year and the board uh, the commission had been very excited about it and so um, this is the next step, finding out if we can move forward understanding what the funding is and we would put together the entire project um, the board, I asked the board if I might stay on as project manager, even though I'm not on the board, and that met with approval, and I'm happy to do that since I've been a part of these projects before. Currently, I would tell you that Venice is doing a seahorse project. I was involved when I lived in the Clearwater area in the dolphin project. That has literally exploded through the city. Um, they had one 
project that happened for the last Republican convention, not, you know, the one way back when. Um, I can't remember the year. I'm sorry about that. But there was 50 dolphins to represent 50 states. And people are buying dolphins. They're getting auctioned off all the time. It's really become an iconic part of the town, uh, art in the town. And so um, basically that's it for the tortoise project. So we want to know if we can move forward and, and if you have any questions. Thank you very much. I mm -hmm. think before we get too far into our questions, City Manager, can you please tell us what we have budgeted for the Arts Advisory Board for the entire board? I looked it up. I just want to make sure that my number matches what you guys have. If you can look for that. Mayor? I will look for it. I don't have the number off the top of my head. For the upcoming year, you approved $4,220. What I thought. For the board, but they have... Uh, All of their projects yes. for the board, yes. For the if, board, for the board expenditure, but we have in the art fund quite a bit of money. Yes. Could you could you tell me the art advisory board budget balance? I do not know that. I so off top of my head, no. You said that we budgeted this year for, for this 000. coming year four thousand two hundred twenty dollars. This they, would be coming asked, from. They had asked for eight thousand four hundred forty one. Right. The, uh, manager, if you could look up to see what we have in the art fund. I won't be able to get that answer for you tonight. The okay. public art fund is well over $100,000. Right. And this project would be coming from that fund, not from our working fund. That's our intention. Well, that, that's a commission decision. Oh, I know, but that's <laughs> our intention that that's where it would come from. And, and I, I wanted to have the dollar amount yes. um, mm -hmm. before we got too far into the weeds, only then to say, oh, hold up, we don't have the money for it. So that's why I was asking those questions. No, I so fully um, understand. At this time, Vice Mayor, go ahead, please. Yep. My thinking was along those same lines, because I knew we had quite a bit of money in there in the arts. And this is public art, in yes. my opinion. A uh, couple of things. Tortoises on parade. <laughs> uh, it's just, an, love, it's just love, an idea. Love the concept, but mm -hmm. can you imagine trying to unload fifty tortoises and put them on the I can. off of it's the float? <laughs> one, it's one of many ideas for promotion. Okay, it absolutely doesn't have to happen. So, yeah, that one would be a little tough. I think. Is the gopher tortoise going to have a base? Yes, similar okay. to to what the frog has. Okay. Can I get rid of that, too? Because the turtle had legs, but I thought you were saying that the tortoise that would have different options. No, the, like the frog. That's why I showed you the frog, because the frog has a base. It would be on a base like that. And they would make it, their intention is to make it kind of dusty and stuff, because yeah. she was even asking me, do you want it coming out of a cave? And we kind of said, no, that's not going to look good, you know, because people will be like, what? what's going on? But yes, it will have a base. Um, did you give thought as to where you want the tortoises placed within the city? And there's a reason I'm asking this question, but I figured I'd open my thoughts with the question to you. Yes. Um, the, the way that other projects like this, this have worked is that businesses or schools or something that would sponsor them. Um, Hopefully, we would sponsor it so that each school would have it. So the schools would have one. Um, businesses would have them. Um, parks, some businesses might sponsor one to go at a park, to go to a park. And so our thinking when, when we were creating the idea for the, the um, theme, and last year, based on your recommendations, the commission's recommendations, was that we would not just have um, birds, you know, we would have all kind of native um, Southwest Florida animals, and that the uh, the land animals would be more for parks and recreation centers, and that the birds, sculpture birds, would be more for like the public art, like on the streets and things like that. So we were thinking parks and things like that. Same type of thought process because I have known businesses, and we had talked this several years ago, and I'm. Sorry, that's blocking my view of you. I apologize. Um, the businesses were sponsoring mm -hmm. it, 
and that's what we had talked several years ago about too. Uh, if a business wanted to sponsor, um, how much would they be paying? Because you want to give a 500 to the artist, the sculpture, the tortoise is 650. So are you looking at 1150 or 1200? No, I said in the presentation, a thousand dollars is what we were thinking. A thousand dollars, we could raise that. Um, I don't know why I lost the presentation, but um, I, we were thinking a thousand dollars with the stipend of 500 going to the artist, um, and then, but we could raise it to 1200. I just for each have. Job? Pardon me. For each Excuse job. me. Hold on. Hold on, guys. This, just to let you know, I, I, it can be very intimidating in this kind of a format. Um, we can only allow you to speak one at a time, and you have to wait until I call on you, please, because we have to capture things for minutes, and we have public viewing and capturing it by video. So I know this is something you guys aren't quite used to, and I should have explained that at the beginning, so my apologies on that. So um, I'm sorry, Ms. Stickler, you had a question? I was asking if that was per prof. Were we going to get $1,000? Donation for fraud? Yeah, it, it would be a thousand dollar sponsorship. The way the sponsorship would work is that after we do the call to artists and the artists design them, then we have businesses who have already said they want to be a part. They would look and they would choose which design they want. Now, if they sponsor a frog after it sits in like the city hall the, in the green area for uh, a period of time, then it would be. Um, they could decide if it would go to a public land or if they would go in front of their business. So if we receive sponsorships. And the, the idea was for, of the $1,000 sponsorship was to make it affordable for businesses, to make it so we don't work at a loss, but also to make it affordable for businesses to sponsor. Well, wouldn't it be at least $150 per tortoise that the city would be pitching in? Because aren't they six fifty dollars a piece? Yes, but we have money for public art, so that's why I did that. So that's why I'm mm -hmm. questioning, are yeah. you going to supplement through the fund for the other 150 this, or This is being or so. presented as a public art project, and so this initial investment of 32000 is literally saying that should we not get any sponsors, this is what this project would cost for the city, um, to do up this work of public art. And that's what this is. This is not meant to be in part of the, the yearly budget at all. It's part of our call in our to do works of public art. So I don't, I can't imagine that we won't get some sponsors, but you know, I'm, I think that it's appropriate to make the assumption and have the budget that there will be no budget no sponsors because why be disappointed <laughs> instead of prepared so I, I think you'll get businesses I do too too and I think they'll mm -hmm. want it on their property I mean it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's art and it's they're participating mm -hmm. in something within the city as um, I mean what do you call um, inaugurable whatever that word is, the first time ever doing it. Yeah, so, inaugural. inaugural. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I think that, I think it would be well received. Any, this is several years past um, that we were talking about doing this, and there were several businesses, including myself, that wanted to do it. <laughs> um, the auction idea, um, we have a really good firefighter auctioneer. <laughs> He is phenomenal, Richard Yarnell. Uh, mm. he, he does a lot of auctions uh, for charities and stuff. So if you did end up doing some sort of auction, you might want to approach Mr. Yarnell in regards okay. to that too. But I love the idea. Um, so thank you for the presentation. Thank you. And thank you, board, for, for uh, coming up with this idea and moving it forward. We didn't find out who this young lady is I was just going to ask the vice here. chair. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Um, Vice Chair Nicastro, um, your board member, could you please introduce the board member that arrived so we can state it for the record? She's here. But she's been here, the one over there. Oh, I thought you just arrived. Mm -mm. Sorry. She's no. been here. Did you catch her name? <laughs> Y'all skipped over her. She's been, she was here. Yeah. Go ahead. Samantha Wait. Parkinson. Thank you. Okay, so I apologize. No problem. <laughs> all right. Um, so that's all I have. That's all you have. Thank you, yeah. Vice Mayor. Commissioner Emmerich, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, now, I know you discussed base and legs. When I looked at that, you know, I seen the frog on the base, and then I seen the turtle with just the legs. Is it still possible to get the turtle with just the legs? And if so, would it be cheaper? It, it won't be markedly cheaper, and then you'd have to buy a base. So okay. it's not cost effective because there has to be a way for the statue to remain fast to do ground. Well, if it's in ground, are you going to place them in businesses up near businesses too on concrete, or is it just going to be on ground throughout the city? No, they can be uh, the base. One photo that you had it was up right next to a business. You yes. Know, if they chose to put it there. The the base is is heavy enough that it won't tip, but if it's on legs, the um, the center of gravity is not strong enough to make it. What's the word? I don't want to say more stable. It, but yeah, to make it more stable. So um, it's. I mean, you we could, but it's not going to make. It won't make that. Much it won't make difference. that much of a difference if we okay. save forty dollars and then have to buy other bases. It, it, I got you. To me, it's like get it all in one package. And your initial <laughs> um, number up there was sixteen thousand, I believe. Was that four twenty five? You originally want to start out with twenty five. I. 25 is the minimum. Right, but does that equate out to the 16,250? Is that what yes. you're looking at ordering is 25? Yes. I just didn't mm -hmm. take the time. To the use. shipping, there's 650 each, you're at, right, and that includes the the cast of the first, you know, of the first one. And the shipping, this price 3365 is what it would cost for 25 up to 50. So if if in our travels, we decide we want more, we don't have to worry that the shipping cost would um, increase. Of course, I did do this um, about five, six months ago, so I would change. I would go back to them. I doubt there would be a market change, but the economy has changed, So, but, but their business has been around for a very, very long time, and so... Um, I, but of course, I would go back to them for an official quote. So, but this, she told me I could count on these numbers. So. Okay, and then your final fee number was thirty-two thousand one hundred and fifteen. That's the total price going forward. If it were to say per se come out of the out fund, um, what I'm asking is, is it, let's say down the road, let's say it's done that way, and down the road you get your sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Would that money in turn then be returned? to the art fund for future projects because this is already covered. Uh, yes, that that would be the intention. Okay. So all the questions I had. Thank cool. you. Cool. Thank you. Um I'll I'll, I'll Miss Stickler, she had her a question. I'll I'll let her go before I ask mine. Um the the thinking I would also think about the legs versus the base is knowing people these things would get walked off with a couple of buddies. So probably with the base, I think you might be able to uh, put something through the base and anchor it. It's a little heavier, too. <laughs> Good point. I do know that other cities that have done this have not had a problem with theft because they're so heavy. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, go ahead with your quick uh, question. I thought about uh, the legs sinking. I mean, yes. you could have one leg sink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the that's other, true. Whatever. At yeah, some really is, wet is, yeah. yeah, the kids sit on it or something. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think of that, but yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, my only questions that I have is that yes, I could see it having a base because the base can then also be part of the art mm -hmm. project and also keep it from the sinking and people sitting on it, climbing on it. That it'll give it a little bit more stability. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I too was a little concerned about theft. 
Um, do you happen to know how much these would weigh approximately? I don't remember. I'm going to tell you that they're going to be at least 100 pounds, if not more. I know that for a fact, but I don't remember the exact weight. The other, logistically, I, I love this idea of having these tortoises located throughout the city. If we are going to get sponsors and a business, we'll, we'll just pick on a business, is going to sponsor one for $1,000, but it's going to cost upwards of $1,500 to $2,000. I would like to have this project make sure that the business keeps it outside. That way then everybody can view it, everybody can participate in it because this is supposed to be public art. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be inside the business, then to me that's defeating the purpose and also using taxpayers' dollars for their benefit. And, and I shouldn't say taxpayers' dollars. I should say um, the city art dollars. fund yeah. monies mm -hmm. for their benefit instead of citywide mm -hmm. benefit. Well, that's why on the project elements that, that we're specific to say partnerships or sponsors, that they're in partnership with us and that it would be clear that these technically are the um, property of the city of Northport. Right. And so we can make that, well, we can make that language clear. Um, the other thing is um, I am concerned with the longevity of this art, public art. Um, will it deteriorate over time? Will it, will it um, start to disintegrate because our elements are far different than up north or in anywhere else? Mm -hmm. Uh, with the constant rain, the humidity, um, we're already seeing decay at the spoonbill, and I am, and that's only been up for six months, mm -hmm. uh, well, nine months or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I am concerned with potential decay um, and putting money out and it not doing what we want it to do mm -hmm. for a long period of time. Um, do you know what this material is made of? Yes, it's um, not formaldehyde. Why can't I think of what? It's not resin either. I can't think of the word, of course, because you asked me, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's that high, high end plastic fibers, and I'll think of the name. I'll think of the word. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't think of the word That's right fine. now. But the decay would be if all public art decays especially if we don't take care of it. And the public art in Italy all has patina on it. Part of public art is patina. What's happening to the spoonbill, although I grant you it's early, is a type of patina because steel does go through that. It's not structural necessarily. These, why can't I think of the name? Anyway, the, the material itself is not going to decay, decay markedly. The paint may, but that's one of the reasons we're going to do the urethane clear coat, okay? And the ones that are out in the full elements, the paint is going to become dim or dull sooner than the ones that may have a little coverage on them. However, paint, I mean, I'm an artist, and to me, I'm like, so paint it again. You know, that's the whole thing. We, we do want to have them clear coated and... Okay, so that's the deal. Okay. Um, uh, obviously, you didn't like that answer. No, I, because if you if you clear coat it, you can't paint it again. Yes, you can. All you have to do is sand it. Right. There's other expenses okay. involved with it. That's where okay. I was As an answer. artist, I can tell you that I painted a dolphin over 10 years ago, and they have not called me to repaint it yet. Cool. It's sitting in the elements in clear water. It was clear coated, and... If they needed to be done, I could sand it and I could paint it again or we could, but this would be like 10, 12 years down the road. All public art, all public art must be maintained. Well, I appreciate you That's sharing. part of the gig. I appreciate you sharing mm -hmm. your experience up in Clearwater with mm -hmm. the dolphin and stuff because that um, 
gives it more credence that this is a long-term thing as opposed yeah. to a six-month or a year thing like the spoon. These milk. are all over the United States. We okay. can call different cities and ask them for their experiences. They're all there's seahorses in Fort Myers right now. Um, the different various locations. I love the idea of having it be a citywide event where you have the mm -hmm. list of where they are and people can go and look at them. Are these sculptures meant to be climbed on, sat on, pictures taken with, and, and stuff like that? A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. I love it. And let, and because of that, just like statues, other places, if a nose gets rubbed, you're going to see yes. rubbing. But that's part of the yeah, character absolutely. and the experience mm -hmm. of public art. It is working with it. I'm very passionate about public art. And that is part of it. That is part of it. Just like murals have to be repainted at a cost. But buildings have to be pressure cleaned. Gardens have to be trimmed. Anything outside, anything inside, all has to be maintained at varying degrees, but it all has to be maintained. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know um, if the board is looking. I don't know if 25 is something we start with. Um, if maybe it goes down to a dozen to get, you know, um, Participant use first. If you if you get twenty five of them and you only get five that want to participate, then what do we do with the others? I, I'm concerned with that. I I don't know if anybody else has given that any thought to do a pilot for the first twelve or first twenty, mm -hmm. um, just picking a number. Um, but to go to twenty five and not have a community understanding of participate participants okay well I will tell you that the cost per statue will go up tremendously if we do less than 25 the other thing is you could call the Venice Art Center they're doing one right now and ask them how many responses they got to call to artists we won't just call to artists only Northport artists we will send out the call to the Sarasota to Venice to Fort Myers I responded to the Venice call to artists. You know, I live in Northport, but it's still, as an artist, I want to be involved in public art. I also would like to earn the seven, they're paying their artists $750. I don't mind earning that $750, you know, my less materials. So there are so many cities that do this. We could, I could get you five cities right now, you could call, Clearwater, Venice, Fort Myers, and Miami, and um, Palm Beach. And you could ask them how theirs are doing. And 25, I guarantee you. And here's the thing. If they didn't, and like maybe only we've got 20 artists, then Clearwater, they called and said, ask the hospital, hey, you want to sponsor one? Hey, you want to do this? And as the project manager, I'd be happy. That's part of being the project manager to me is doing the legwork and making that happen. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, oh, uh, Vice Mayor Luke, you have a follow-up well, question. The city attorney's had her light I, on I, for I know, long. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, I, I wouldn't want to do any less than 25 to start with. To me, that is more of a pilot. Uh, I think the businesses are going to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and we've got, what, 26, 27 parks in the city? Uh, so if a business doesn't have it, guess what? Park gets mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so I think that amount is fine. Uh, city manager Venice did pigs or something, didn't they, at one point I in time? That. Yes, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, and there I still see pigs. There's still a place mm -hmm. up there on Venice Avenue and yep. other yeah. businesses. And they, that's been years and years ago that they, they did that program. Mm. Um all right, I have an idea instead of tortoises on parade. Uh, how about a tortoise GPS hunt? We actually already talked about that, that and we would make a map. After, after they're placed, that is an incentive for a sponsor also. If you have that hunt, it takes the, uh, the hunter to that location mm -hmm. to see the various tortoises, mm -hmm. and it gives them an opportunity to showcase the their business also so i think it would be a win-win doing a 
on this uh, screen Tortoise now, Studios. under the possible promotional costs, I have maps for the Gopher Tortoise Trail, and we talked about that. That's the last one. Obviously, there would be a cost into making physical maps as well as creating that, but it would be, oh, in our, the whole project, it would be negligible. Our Parks and Rec have... Uh, and GPS we can partner thing. with them. They yeah. just give a coordinate or mm -hmm. whatever, and then you run, yep. do the coordinate. And yeah. It'd be fun for made. kids to have like a a um, novelty map to check things off and stuff like that, too. We were talking about You can about do that. something like that, but those kids are going to figure that yeah. GPS out. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. That is the final of mine. Thank you. Um, Miss Zoe, you had a question. It was more of an idea to, you know, when we're concerned about um, getting sponsors, something I was thinking about is the ones, I'm from Iowa, so I realize totally different. Um, but in our college town, we had it done, and they're still around, and it, they've been 15, 20 years. Um, but what I saw them do is they, almost like the artists, connected with the business and sponsored them together, like, Hey, I really want to do your business. Here's my design, and then the business would buy that design, and it would be that business oriented. So they would, it would be, you know, sweep scoops. I'm thinking. I'm not even sure if they're North Florida or Charlotte, but point is, they, they would have a sweep scoop theme with the ice cream mm -hmm. Florida. Um, and so, if that's a concern, possibly connecting the artists to the businesses and getting it, getting that partnership from the get go, so that they're they're already invested before the project even begins. Yeah, that's and, actually and a common way. So. That's actually a common way to do it. Where if Sweet Scoops wants to do it, they either find their own artist or they ask maybe Northport Art Center or the advisory board. Do you know an artist that we could hook up with and maybe see before before we put them all out? So that's very common. Like I remember in Clearwater, that there's a lot of hospitals there. They specifically went to artists that had already done murals in their hospital and asked them to specifically do something like with a doctor's coat and a stethoscope, you know, but all sculptural. And so that's very, very common and we be easy to do that as well. And, Vice Mayor. and I would think that the business, if they wanted to do it themselves, I was going to paint the one that we were thinking of it in our business. Sure. Uh, not really even hiring the professional, but doing it myself. Might not be as pretty, but <laughs> <laughs> it'd be fun. Um, Mr. Castro, does anybody else on your board have any other questions or comments that they would like to get into the record? And then I'm going to turn it over to City Attorney. Um, I was just going to say also, when you do the call to artists, you can make a base requirement for the materials so that it's, you know, paint that, you know, whether it's house paint or whatever, but that it's durable outside as opposed to them painting it with like acrylic paint because <laughs> um, that will fade very fast. So that's another option when you do the call that their materials have to meet a certain Perfect. standard or grade that that'll help the longevity. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Can we put giant masks on them all? <laughs> Just so they're removable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, um, before we give direction or anything like that, um, City Attorney, you wanted to weigh in on something? Yes, Mayor, a couple of legal technicalities for the okay. City Commission's consideration. <clears throat> I've passed out to all the commissioners and all members of the advisory board should have this as well, but I think some of the name tags have been moved since I passed out a copy of the code provisions that relate to the Art Advisory Board. Um, you'll see in section 4-123, toward the bottom of the sheet, the advisory board's powers and duties, which include to advise and recommend on three different matters. One, the rotation of an art exhibit within City Hall and the Police Department. Two, recommendations on the placement of artwork within public places within the city limits. And three, presentation of an art budget to the commission for review. So these are pretty specific and um, are narrow when compared to your other advisory boards. And a lot of what is on the agenda tonight um, is likely outside the scope of what the code permits for the board's powers and duties. Now, the code can be amended by ordinance. That does take two readings in a public meeting, so that takes a little bit of time to do to expand the duties to a certain extent. So that is an option that the board 
has to that the board can provide direction on the board meeting the city commission um, you should also consider that in your code your advisory boards are all advisory in nature they all advise and recommend items to the commission for action and are not empowered to conduct projects and um, and, and take action on their own there are ways that you can address that. I mean, you still could empower your advisory board that way. It would be a bit of a departure. You could also create a separate committee for that purpose. Here on this particular item, according to the agenda, part of what's being asked is to allow a non-board member to work as a project coordinator on this project. And I think you could have some potential sunshine law concerns about that. Everything that the advisory board or the city commission does has to be done in public meeting. And, um, you know, a lot of these items would be done presumably outside the public meeting. And it, there just could potentially um, be some issues down the road. Whereas if you were to form a committee and do that by resolution and kind of meet out and decide how you want to delegate your authority, whether you do that by forming a committee or empowering the advisory board to do it, both in your direction and by modifying the code language after you know, two, two readings separate from this meeting, <clears throat> you're going to want to think about how you want to delegate your authority um, and how we ensure that the project follows all the legal regulations, such as the purchasing regulations. Um, we'd have to ask our, someone in finance for purchasing really how the purchasing would work here, but with the, the government, you can't just decide what vendor no, you like know. usually and go with them. So that could affect the possible price. So there are a lot of, on a large project like this where you're talking about potential events and, and things like that, there are a lot of considerations to think about that could cross legal lines. So I just wanted to kind of uh, put that into the mix for your consideration. Her name is Pucci. Yes, I wanted to ask a question because that that is great that you bring up those the powers and duties, but. We have had many meetings with the, is it the neighborhood development? We don't have a liaison right now. Um, they, they've come to us. Go ahead. The, the neighborhood, and I think it's called the Neighborhood and Development Department. They've come to us with the 150 some odd thousand dollars specifically asking us to decide on projects. And we did the Spoonbill project so technically, I recognize now that I'm looking at this, that that doesn't technically fall under this. And I do want you to know that we're not making any assumptions here. We are, we are presenting this as a recommendation to go forward. Also, um, I would, I understand the sunshine um, concern and being a former board member, I understand that all I would be doing is legwork and then coming back to the meetings. I would never make a move. And also this initial um, this initial uh, proposal of numbers is just a company that I happen to know of that has done it for other cities. And we certainly would follow the guidelines of however many bids we would, you know, official bids we would have to get. This is just, this was a, a recommendation of an, a project because we have been charged Maybe not with this section four, 123, but we have definitely been charged in meetings that we need to decide on public art projects. So that might be something we have to clear up in general. So you guys, um, I'm just curious if you think I'm speaking out of turn or not, that they've specifically come to us and charged us with creating public art projects. Not you yourselves, but other people from the city have come to us. I know that as a, a um, as a commission, we had discussed doing public art and and have many have have had many conversations about public art um, and wanting to expand our public art. And we, I, I don't think we came up with the idea of the tortoise. I think we came up with something else of doing some public art where we have this hunt or GPS, or a map, or anything like that, and having artists involved. Um, I think all city attorney is doing is removing oh, no, 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 rules and regulations and, and, and making sure that we 
and you don't mm-hmm. overstep bounds. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate the city attorney weighing in on mm-hmm. that. And with that said, city attorney would like to speak, and so does the city manager. So we'll let them speak, and then we'll. Okay. I just wanted to just say we weren't that. making assumptions about. Yeah. And, and just to, to clarify, it very well may have been that the commission has made that direction in the past, but the commission direction in order to be completely legal has to comply with the yeah. code. So they can change the code. That's okay. <laughs> they, they can fix that. It just takes a little bit of time. So um, if that's the direction that, that this commission wants to move in, we'll just have to take, we'll have to take that, um, that action. And I also wanted to point out that recommending on creating a program or placing art is different than executing, you know, on that program. And our code provides for staff liaisons to the board. And I know that you all are in transition with a staff liaison. But just as a reminder to both boards, um, per the code, the staff liaison essentially helps to um, gather up the advisory board members for meetings and gather the materials for the meetings. They are city employees who have full-time jobs and are doing this in addition to their full-time duties, and they do not provide staff services to the boards. The code provides that if the board wants a staff service, um, they have to vote on it, and it has to be made by the authority of the entire board, not just one member, and then that request goes up to the city manager for approval. Thank you, city attorney. City manager, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, obviously, I saw the look when you found out that they don't have a staff liaison that they they did until very recently. That employee resigned from the city. Um, we are in the process. Um, it's always best if I can get a volunteer rather than a point. Um, I have given all of the directors the opportunity to find me a volunteer. If we don't have one soon, um, I will take option two. Um, but I believe that if you can get somebody to volunteer for something, they're more likely to do a good job at it than if they have to be told to do it. Um, that being said, yes, um, as far as the um, previous projects, such as the Spoonville, Spoonville project, that's something that has been worked on. It was actually public art on that specific corner since before I started working at the city, um, which was back in 2008. I know that I've been dealing with that at, when I was in finance, um, as well as all the way to its final fruition um, within the last year or so. So that's, and that what did come actually at the direction of the commission um, may not have been 100% legal, the direction as we're learning now, but back when it was done, nobody made that correction. It started out as a clock project actually. Um, and, you know, as we are well aware now, that may not have been exactly appropriate when it was done, but that happens throughout history anyway. Um, not trying to make excuses for it, I'm just giving you the historical background on it. That, um, that that project started, like I say, long before 2008. Um, that being said, as the city attorney mentioned, you know, if the pro- if the group wants to make recommendations, that's great, um, and I'm all for that. But as far as the actual execution of it, it's kind of complicated, mm-hmm. and you know, it's nothing. Not trying to insult any members of either board, but navigating through our processes can be difficult for staff who do it all the time, much less people who have never done it. So city manager, um, obviously there is a desire to do some type of a public art program similar to what they are presenting and that we'll just call it the tortoise project. Um, If we as the commission give direction to move forward with the tortoise project, basically then staff takes over because they presented their idea We said, we love this idea. Let's move on. How do we move on? Is that something staff does solely, or is that something staff does with the advisory board? How does that move on? Typically, you would give me the direction to make that happen, and I would make it happen. Okay. Um, Now, if you wanted us to make sure that we ran it by the art board for their recommendations, um, and again, as the city attorney mentioned, if you want to change their powers and duties, that's up to you all. That's beyond my scope. That's, a, as you've heard me say many times, um, the advisory boards are yours. You decide how they work. Um, if you have a project you want done, that's something you would give to me and we would do it. Now, I'm not saying we can't work with an advisory board. Certainly we will, um, if that's the direction. But um, I think what I was trying to state earlier, just so everybody's aware, is navigating through that process is not something, you know, 
if you were to say, and again, we'll just use the gopher tortoise project as an example. Um, that's a, a lot of good information was in that presentation. We would take that and make sure it follows all the procurement processes and everything to make it happen. Um, I think it would be a great idea to have the art advisory board say, this is what we want the tortoises to look like um, and to have input on that. The ultimate decisions, the commissions um, and you all are the ones that held, are held accountable, not only to what you do and what I do, but also what your advisory boards do. Thank you. Um, Vice Mayor? I, I uh, appreciate what the city manager um, addressing the spoon bill, uh, how it was executed. Um, it was a project ever since, you know, that, that plaza was put in. Now, I do not know how the code reads for public art, but uh, as construction and development is put in place, that's where that money comes from. So it could be that code addresses who handles that and who brings those projects forward. So it's not just the code for these guys, but we probably need to look at the code for public art and how it's accumulated and how it goes forward. Um, and if it does not address uh, the art board um, being part of handling public art, I definitely want to change the code. Um, I think that is pretty much what the art advisory board should be doing. And so if there was an oversight of public art within the formation of that code, I would like to see it addressed. Uh, maybe within that code, if it's easier to select a task force or committee, however you want to talk about it, because other uh, boards, I believe, have task forces, um, that we put that within that code as we rewrite it all. So um, my personal take is I <clears throat> love this and I want to see it. Uh, this is a type <coughs> of public art that just pulls you in immediately when it's all over the city like that. And so I'm definitely for it. And uh, I don't mind helping the city attorney to, to draft something to bring forward to change the code if need be. And before I turn this back over to city attorney, um, I went to a um, conference up in Charlotte and they talked about how their art in public places attracts so many people from all over the world to see their art, whether it be a silly tortoise or seahorse or the statue that's down at Bayfront or, or the Picasso in Chicago. That is what public art is supposed to do is to attract people. Um, how we get there is the logistics that we as a commission, we as a city, we as staff have to work out and work through with your assistance, knowing that it's going to take a long time, but hopefully not 12 years like the spoon bill took. <laughs> um, so with that said, I, I'm hearing agreement of moving forward, and I think your recommendation does fall into your scope of responsibilities because it's art within public places within the city limits. So it, you made this recommendation of the, of the gopher tortoise. I applaud it. I think it is a fantastic idea. Um, now we just have to get from idea to paper to implementation. How to execute it. So, and that's all the logistics. And, and I know as artists, you, you want to see execution completed much quicker, but this is government. <laughs> so I'll say... Put on your big patient pants and let us work through the logistics that we sometimes even get frustrated with. Um, so at this time, I'll turn it over to city attorney and then we'll give city manager direction on this type of project. And then we'll move on to the next agenda item, if that's okay, okay with the will of the board. It's a board itself. City, man, uh, city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. In response to, to um, Vice Mayor's comments, I've not located any other references to the Art Advisory Board other than in the section that I've printed out for everyone here tonight. And in looking at the public art sections, I don't, specifically, I don't see anything um, empowering the Art Advisory Board there as well. 
doesn't empower anybody to make the selection or execute public art. I was looking specific to the specific okay. to the advisory well, that, That's board. fine. We can look into it later. We don't yeah. have to. What, deal do you know with what the code now. is for public art code? Fifty-five dash eight and nine. Fifty-five dash eight and the account. Let's see. It starts with fifty-nine dash one. And goes through sixteen. <coughs> And this was something that is supposed to be on that rolling agenda also. This was something I brought up quite a while ago as to how we were going to handle public art. Um, so this needed to be coming back to us anyhow. So it provides the public art or public work of art is approved by the staff, city staff or city commission prior to placement on the site. With the your, your board's duties um, in... 4-123A2 provides as the board advises and recommends on the following matters, recommendations on the placement of artwork. So, you know, there certainly is some purview there, but not necessarily with respect to the execution of the whole project. That is what that, that is outside the scope of what the plain language of your code says. Um, with respect to committees, I don't think we have the boards themselves cannot, the advisory boards cannot create their own committees. You guys could allow that if you wanted to. We, we don't have any of that in the city currently that I'm aware of. You could also create your own ad hoc committee by resolution. But whatever you decide to do, I urge you when you when you take your action tonight that you really think about what, if you're going to delegate any authority, think about like what level you want to delegate and down to what degree because a project of this scope has a lot of moving parts and a lot of different phases. So, you know, what does it mean if you just say that you want to approve the project? Well, what is that, you know, when do you want to see something back or do you want to see something back? Can, can I ask a question? Uh, can we charge or give a direction to staff um, in an encompassing charge for staff to do this project and utilize the art board, can we do that, you know, as a direction? You certainly can always direct your city manager. Okay. That's the shortcut. So if we, if we give that type of direction to city manager to work with the art advisory board, I think he would need to know what parameters we want him working with the art advisory board. Or do you want to leave it vague for your liaison staff and the art advisory board and then come back to the commission with their final ideas and and, Cost. and the costs and stuff like that. Some form of parameters would be nice um, so that it's not just um, so wide open that nothing gets done. <laughs> um, I'd hate to see us have a whole bunch of back and forth as well as disagreements because again like you know we both you know I hate to be doing work for you all. The advisory board works for you. I work for you. But there's not a, you know, they don't work for me who works for you. And the other way around doesn't work either. So, so there's not a, a problem. Some form of parameters. You know, it doesn't need to be too specific, but at least something like, you know, we'd like you to work. Uh, what entered my head, I guess, was we want you to run with this project but before you bring it back to us, run it by the advisory board to get their um, advice as an advisory board or their input. Um, and we could bring similar like we have with other of your advisory boards, their recommendations with staff's recommendations. And if they're the same, that's great. If they're not, then you all get to make that decision. Um, something like the first step of this logistical process do you think six months time frame to come back with the recommendation so that we can move on to the next level and give the final approval of this is what we want, that is what we want, is six months a realistic time frame to meet, to work with your staff and the advisory board? I think we could have something for you in six months. Um, one of the things that we will have to bring you in that time frame, there's been multiple discussions tonight about the, the art fund, which are funds that we collect from developers. Um, that's not budgeted, just you know. So we one of the steps logistically we would have to bring you all is a budget amendment 
to budget for the funds and some of the procurement fun of that is I can't put something out on the street for procurement unless the funds are budgeted. So step one will be you all giving us some idea of what you want the budget to be. Um, you had a nice presentation on a ballpark of it. I would recommend shoot a little higher than that because since that hasn't followed procurement yet, the prices could come in higher. And you know, if it's okay to do a second budget amendment. I can put it out with the amount that's in there and it doesn't stop people from put a contingency <laughs> attached to the budget men. So I, I would recommend no less than what they've put in there. You might want to add 10 or 20% to that. Just um, knowing that you're going to need a contingency, knowing that sometimes when people realize the requirements that a government has working for them for insurance and all the other things, their prices come in a little higher. Sometimes they don't. Um, it's all over the place. If it, if we put this out on the street through procurement and whatever procurement process that is, whether it be a bid or proposal or whatever comes back, if it's higher, then we'll have to bring you a second budget amendment if it's beyond this, the amount we have budgeted. Fantastic. And at what point, um, is the call to artists much later than after the recommendations or is it done simultaneously? <laughs> um, that, that's probably something you'll have to work out the logistics during that first six month kind yep. of. That, that would be an early project as well um, because a call to artists, um, we're all pretty comfortable in saying that I am not an artist. Um, so that we would need to figure out what that's going to look like. I know that once we came up with an idea for the spoon bill, we put out a, a call to artists, got ideas <coughs> for public art. So um, I'd have to figure that out, honestly. Not maybe prepared to answer maybe that the city of Venice might be willing to to help navigate this first time with they've already done it, so I don't think we need to recreate the wheel either. Maybe they can. We are very good at plagiarism around here. Good. We would certainly call everybody else has done it. I know Bradenton <laughs> has geckos all over the town. Venice has um, the pigs. I've seen dolphins somewhere else. I forget where that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I ask one question? Just uh, go ahead with this. Where did we the the art board? We had a budget for that corner. So how did we have that? We knew how much was collected from that development when that shopping center was um, built. Uh -huh. They put in a certain amount into the public art fund. And that, that was specifically set in for our charge? Corner. But it was set in our charge as the advisory board? Or was that just, does that seem now that that was not kosher? It was probably not kosher. Okay, but okay. Better. But we did go through a lot of back and forth, and we met with all the different, and I remember even one time having, we thought everything was ready, and then we were like, oh, we got to meet with one more person, and we did it all. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody on your board, Ms. Nicastro, that has any questions or comments? Because we're going to then give our city manager some direction. Okay. Give the city manager some more direction. All right. So, um, I will entertain a motion um, if we need to do a few, uh, if we need to do some consensuses first and then a main motion, I will let you folks decide or else I'll pass the gavel. Whichever way you want to do it, you want to do the consensuses and then we'll just, do some consensus and then make the motion to include the consensus. Gotcha. Um, let's get a consensus to have this be a public art project using the gopher tortoise with a base um, as a public art project within the city of Northport, limiting it to 25 um, tortoises. That's the first consensus. Yes. Yes. Your board, all right? Um, I don't think their board. Oh, do we? we don't uh, their board, I don't think, weighs in on these consensuses. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Twenty-five. Okay. Tortoise. Can I ask for a consensus that we set a, a budget of thirty-seven thousand? Is that thirty-seven thousand with is that were sponsorships or is that project for the project? that uh, gives a little bit higher. I mean, if you want to add a 10% contingency on top of that, we could do that also, but it is approximately 5,000 higher than what uh, they brought in. So I just 
figured capping it at a thirty-seven thousand. So, um, Vice Mayor, you want to get a, a consensus to have a budget of thirty-seven thousand dollars with a ten percent contingency. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Armitage. Yes. And I'm a yes. So that passed off. Commissioner Armitage, did you have any consensus as you want to? No, I was actually Based on thinking a little bit higher on the amount, but we'll start there. <laughs> It, it may may have to change. It may have to know, change, but it's a good on, starting spot. I mean, five thousand above what we what they come up with now. It's mm -hmm. it's a good start. I, I want to be safe. Contingency would give three thousand right. more. Um, do we need to have consensus, city manager, for location placements or sponsorship? Um. This, Sponsorships, if you want us to try to go after those or work with somebody to go get them, it's not a good idea or not a bad idea to recommend that. Yeah, because if we want businesses to participate, we want the chamber to participate, schools to participate, I think you would need to know that. Uh, I'm just, okay, uh, let's get a consensus to have this project include school, Northport schools, obviously, uh, Northport businesses, possibly chamber um, as part of the project. Uh, I'm good that you're doing that, but to me, giving city manager direction to run with this project that was already part of the That's project. The yeah, so. Thank you. It's just nice to know that that is something you guys won't run with so that it doesn't. Okay. We'll, I don't like to assume. We'll make it as detailed as you want it. I'm a yes. I just thought it was okay. already included. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, that's good. Cool. It's I'm okay. Bad. I will run with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll even give you a yes, but. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I seat for that. <laughs> um, I would like to also get a consensus and, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask city manager a question. Last year, we gave direction to come back with methodologies relating to public art contributions, uh, relating to the percentages charged, uh, if it's charged by square footages. Do you know when we're going to have that discussion? Not off the top of my head. I wasn't prepared for that tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. But I will. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I just read was, something recently. It was almost a year, almost well, a year and a half ago, we gave yeah. that kind of direction to have the contribution portion. I'll get you an update on where that stands. Would you please? Yes, ma'am. Let's get a consensus yes, to get a memo on the update of um, our Or fund. you might get it right now. Oh, they do have it right now. Um, for the record, Nicole Gale, House Planning Division Manager. We are working on that methodology. We've been coordinating with the Art Board to get an idea of their overall um, strategic plan for art in the city. Um, that was one of the methodologies that we plan to bring back, is kind of working with what the end goal is and working backwards to what that cost is and then what the fee would be for the developer. Um, I believe it is on the um, CM report for December of this year. Thank you. So I guess we don't need consensus or a memo. Thank you for that update. And I'll update my notes too. Um, city manager, do you think of any other consensuses you need to be able to run with this vote for toward? Oh, six months. Uh, get a consensus to have this come back to commission for review and uh, further discussion as an agenda item in six months. Yeah. I wish it were sooner, but yeah. Uh, or sooner. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put six months or sooner, but. It'll be six months. It, it'll be six months with an update saying we need more time. <laughs> <laughs> but they we're getting to best. know it too well yeah. how this works. Carrie's memos that come out. <laughs> okay, so six months, I heard yes from all of you. All right. Um, anybody else think of any other consensuses that we need to get city manager is it pretty clear as mud yes ma'am uh -huh. anybody else have any consensuses i'll go ahead and entertain a motion please um move to direct city manager to run with this project that's been recommended by the art advisory board um, working how he needs to see fit utilizing them as a sounding board to 
produce the program and including the consensuses that have been brought forward on the dais. Second. Motion on the floor is stated by Vice Mayor the Clerk. Okay. And that was seconded by Commissioner Emrich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? Yeah. The, this to me is, is great. I'm all about this. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Emrich. No, I just think it's going to be nice. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Can't wait for the GPS hunt. And, and I really look forward to seeing what these gopher tortoises are going to look like. Um, I look forward to, I see the kids in those big, huge Anirondack chairs over at Cocoa Plum and their mm -hmm. faces as they're trying to climb up them. And I can see their faces as they're sitting next to, on top of hugging whatever these gopher tortoises throughout the city. And in this time, I think it's time we do something fun. And the best part is this is not costing the taxpayers anything. That I, I, we really need to drive that home, yep. um, because this is something that the businesses, as they're developing in our city and they come to our city, this is something that they pay into, and uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this come to fruition. And I appreciate your help on this, and your input and your recommendations. And I cannot wait to see what this is going to look like. So I am hoping one of them has um, sand. You know where he's dug and he's got sand and dirt. They'll make the stuff. base look like sand, and it's yeah. fiberglass. The fiberglass. word I couldn't think of. <laughs> Thank you. you put fiberglass. it in the middle of a volleyball court. <laughs> it's solid. <laughs> We're going to have to also address uh, the theft because they're going to be cute, and I don't want them walking away. <laughs> well, there's ways to do it now. We All right. Uh, we anchor them. In, we, and we've I'm anchored them say stuff that in the ground them, big time. Right. So. Not say None of them have ever been stolen because I believe I did hear some were stolen in Venice. But, All right, so uh, now. They can anchor them. We need to take uh, a vote. Oh, yes, we sure do. Um, go ahead and take that vote on that um, motion as stated. And that passed three to zero. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. <coughs> All right. So now we'll move on to general discussion and possible action regarding the approval of a proposed logo for the Arts Advisory Board documents. Excuse me, Mayor. Did you want to do anything with the other, um, with Ms. Pucci as the project manor, manager or no? I don't think we can. I think this no. is going to be have to be something that the city manager is going to have to address because um, this is a city project. I don't know if we could have an individual city attorney or city manager. You're going to have to weigh in on that. I don't think that's possible to do. Or is that something you can look into and come back to us in six months when we review the rest of the stuff? Does she have to sit off a year or something before she can come back on? Is that why she's not on it? Yeah, mean? my term is up. But And this meeting just happened. To, my term was up October 9th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this meeting just happened to fall right after it. And, yeah, so that's why. And I've been on what? I can't remember if I'm on, been on be three on or board. four years. <laughs> I have to go. I have to go off. So maybe we can address the project manager part of it um, in six months. Thank you. She could even fall under like lead contact person or something. No what, uh, we'll whatever they out. work out, it could come back in, <laughs> in any type of definition. You're welcome to hire me as a... <laughs> 750, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 750 hour. Remember when I told you about this isn't costing the taxpayers anything? <laughs> <laughs> How soon we forget. <laughs> All right. So now we'll move on to discussion and action regarding the logo. Um, uh, Vice Chair Nicastro, you want to go ahead and speak about that? We did a logo to all the documents. It looks like a Florida leak. It's on the screen now. Or it's on my screen now. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And, and please forgive me, this is absolutely not because Jamie can't do this, um, but because I was the chair and was involved with this from its inception, I was doing the presentation tonight, and so that's why I'm just standing here. Okay. But that, the logo that we worked on together is right there. Um, we just wanted to have our, a little bit of our own identity, but we did not know 
if that was appropriate because Northport has a logo. And so we just put, that's one of the things that we put forward. Um, anybody have any questions of Vice Mayor Luke? Um, I'm in agreement with you guys. I like the one with the green leaf, um, but I think a city attorney is going to have to maybe let us know if they're allowed as a board to have their own emblem. I don't know that there's anything preventing it. Um, I don't know that we have. I'm trying to think of what kind of documents the board That's exactly would what produce, my was. <laughs> considering its its codified powers and. And duties. I mean, they'd be prevent, providing memos and some written recommendations to this board, um, which I think that I'm not positive the city clerk or city manager may know. I believe all the advisory boards use the same template to do that. Um, that liaison usually types them up and presents them to the city manager on the city letterhead. I hope Laura had it. The intention was for it to be a mark of identity for calls to artists and for like um, social media, encouraging artists to be part of this. But like I said, this was an idea we had and we absolutely talked about the fact that Northport already has a logo, this might not be kosher, but we kind of came up with one and said we wanted to ask. But that's what it was for, calls to artists and such. Well, if not, it'll look good on a t-shirt. And t-shirts. It's, it's, a, it's a nice logo. Thank you. It's a very nice logo. Um, I, for one, I, I think you are a city board. Um, I think it should stay as our city logo um, because that's just what I think. That's cool. <laughs> and it's not just about Debbie. It's about my fellow commissioners making the decision. Well, I'm, um, I'm in agreement with what you've said, Mayor. Um, Recognizing that as the emblem for you guys um, is nice, but what needs to be recognized is the emblem for the city mm -hmm. that you are an advisory board to. So sticking it on a, a call to artists, um, I don't want to send mixed messages that okay. you're somehow separate from the city. So I'm, I'm in agreement that um, anything that mm -hmm. goes out should just bear or the emblem of the city. We discussed that, that that and was a the strong The advisory board, if there's anything that's going out, whether it be in conjunction with the city of Northport and the arts advisory board, mm -hmm. um, it, it would, it, you would be recognized. Mm -hmm. um, I, I miss, Vice Mayor eloquently puts things so much better than I ever could. Um, there could be confusion and I, I would not want that, especially with the art, um, center, mm -hmm. the art advisory board, the city of North. I, I, I don't want to create any, any conflict here. So I, for one, am not in favor of the okay. logo. Um, I don't know if Commissioner Emmerich wants to weigh in. I said it looked good on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. We'll if, let you make one. <laughs> I don't know if uh, any action needs to be taken about the logo. Um, I don't hear any, so we'll just move on to the next item is the Art Advisory Board Strategic Plan. Okay, so you guys will have to excuse some ignorance on our part because of this, because um, one of the things was that when I asked if we could flip the business, I didn't realize what was going you know. And so many of the things we just discussed about the tortoise project may come up again. Mm -hmm. Please understand that we fully, fully function recognizing that we are recommending things and that we're ready to be called into action. So the projects that we have ready to go are only upon approval from you all. So that said, um, because I want you to know what our heart is and what our work is. Okay, so this is, um, uh, the, the two new members were not part of our board when this was published and voted on, so please forgive. Um, that they are not listed here, and at the time I was the chair. Um, so I don't want anything also to be um, inappropriate. We do have what the, um, what this, we talked about this last year, 
that the public art theme would be native flora and native fauna, which is Florida native plants and animals. That was voted on last year and um, approved by the commission and that the artistic style would um, be determined by the artist. So I might want to do, as an artist, I might want to do tick seed, which is the native uh, wildflower of Florida, but I might do it in an abstract way. And so we're leaving the genre open, but we want the theme to become a strong identity. That is what we are recommending so that when visitors come, they know that Northport, one of the things we stand for and we are encouraging is the native flora and fauna of our state. Um, and it will separate us from other towns, um, around us especially, as being about ecotourism and things like that, that will all go together. Um, our, our recommendation is that we open up our calls to artists who are full-time or part-time residents of Florida, um, so that we encourage Florida artists to be a part of our calls. And there's no lack of Florida artists um, who are nationally renowned, if not world renowned. And that we are also doing quarterly art exhibitions in Northport City Hall and an annual student art exhibition second quarter. These were all things that were approved last year. And the um, commission had asked us to come up with a stronger strategic plan. And this, this was basically the beginning of that. So our first objective that we recommend is to assess the current state of public art in the city of Northport. Obviously, the, our board cannot go and find each piece of the art that we already own. <laughs> so we we're, are encouraging for a listing so that we can um, uh, check what does need maintenance and things like that. Um, objective two was to identify opportunities to expand the public art profile in the city of Northport, include permanent, including permanent installations, temporary exhibitions, participatory programs, and more to stimulate a vibrant public art environment that will enrich all citizens. Objective three that we recommend is to collaborate with municipal, civic, nonprofit, and private sector organizations to create opportunities for public art. Objective four, build awareness and promote understanding of public art in, and the arts in general. And those are our, um, those are our four objectives. Um, the City Hall Art Exhibition schedule, we went over this last year and we are just refined it. Um, we're going quarterly, so that the Northport Art Center is already cooperating with the City of Northport in this, but we wanted to define these, um, the timing of these a little bit better. The first quarter is going to be by local artisans and the Northport Art Center will curate that as they are currently doing. This is the biggest change here. The second quarter, the Arts at the Hall student art exhibition, which we started a few years ago, um, that is going to be curated by the Arts Advisory Board. And the student art will stay up for approximately um, two and a half months or two months. I, it's further in there. Then the third quarter, which would include the summer, would again go back to um, being curated by the Northport Art Center. And the fourth quarter would be by the um, City Hall employees because that is such a wonderful and um, exciting and vibrant tradition here at City Hall. Um, the Arts at the Hall Student Art Exhibition um, will begin with an artist reception annually on the Thursday after Sarasota County School scheduled spring break. We felt it was very important to have a regularly timed um, event. And although we can't do the exact date, if we say the Thursday after the county, the public school spring break, that should work out well. As a teacher, I can tell you that that will work out well also with a lot of the like um, art activities that are involved in, in and around um, school as well. Um, the exhibition will run from whatever Thursday that happens to be to the second Monday in May. And this will allow basically for the students to pick up their art before the school year is over. These exact dates will be announced annually according to the school calendar. Um, now here's where we are going to have to back up the truck a little bit. We've made, these are recommendations. And now we have learned this evening that um, we may not be allowed to create projects. However, um, the annually, the Arts at the Hall 
the student art reception. Our go-to project manager for that um, is Jamie Nicastro. The tortoises about town, I was uh, named project manager for that, Laura Pucci. Um, we wanted 2022 to be a, a mural, and uh, Didi Gozian was working on details and a presentation for that. 2023, we wanted to go with a sculpture. Holly Luce was the project manager there. And 2024, we were working on a, a mural, but this one, since it was our 65th anniversary, we were hoping that it would might be more a more significant mural and have some sculptural sculptural aspects to it and might be a mosaic mural. These were our ideas, okay? And then as you can see, we are going from sculpture, mural, sculpture, mural, sculpture. And so if, if Pauline Stickler is working now on the mural to go up in 2024, that is actually a possibility that it would actually happen in 2024 because as we all know, the wheels of government turn slowly. And so we want to get ahead and make sure that projects actually do happen. Um, and then there was the Go for Tortoise project, which I talked to you about, that Icon Poly would fabricate the tortoises. Um, we had intended for it to hopefully be at Arts on the Green 2021. After tonight's discussion, I can tell you that absolutely positively could not happen. Um, so the entire project line might have to be moved up a year. And that obviously also would be determined on whether or not we are even able to work on projects. Um, so as you see, after a determined amount of time, the sculptures would be placed throughout the community. And there would be various opportunities for promotional events. This is basically the same thing that I already went through. And there you go. So our, our um, why can't I think of the word? See, this is after a day of teaching. Please excuse me. <laughs> I, I use up all my words <laughs> teaching middle school students. Our strategic plan as you can see, has four objectives. And um, we are open and happy to talk about any or all of them with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Before we go on, where do you teach middle school? I teach in Charlotte County, actually. I teach oh. Port Charlotte Middle School. Nice. I'm the art teacher there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The students are very lucky to have you as the Thank teacher. you very much. Oh, they I'm agree sorry. with you. <laughs> they paid me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> right there. Laura, first of all, don't apologize for planning. I mean, oh, it, it is so refreshing. I would never apologize for planning. I just didn't want you to think that we are assuming everything is approved. We know we have to come to you. That's what is proper, I mean, with the boards. And it's refreshing to have a, a board actually do some planning. Like yeah, we this. like to get things done. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't have told you that we were going to run into some of these um, brick walls myself. So uh, bringing this forward is going to help us correct things for the future too. So uh, no apology of trying to do that. Uh, public art. City attorney, is that defined somewhere as to what public art is? Or where it's located? Because there's, a, to me, a difference between public if it's um, public as far as city-owned or if it's private. In the section of the code that relates to the public art account, it does provide that the art will be owned by the city, but it does not state that it has to be on public property. Correct, but it's owned by the city. Okay. With respect to what's paid for by the public art account, that's correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we knew what that definition was going to be. I'm going to bring a top topic up in a little bit, and so I wanted to make sure we knew what the definition of that was. And just to be clear, with respect to the language and the scope of the board's duties, it's for the placement of artwork within public places, within the city limits. It's worded a little bit differently. Correct. I made a mistake. I wasn't done. <laughs> <laughs> we, created, we created a workbook as part of our, our strategic plan, please forgive me, I'm a little nervous. Um, we had the mission, um, the public art theme, um, and 
we had the duties and functions as, as um, we understood them. Um, actually, let me just go to the first page. Our, our workbook has this as, um, as you can see, we have the mission, the public art theme, the strategic plan that I just presented. We have a little maintenance plan. We have the anticipated schedule of projects, the arts at the hall student exhibition, project planner um, as we defined it, project checklist, call to artists for murals, call to artists for sculptures. This was all so, as part of the strategic plan, this was all so that as we know, as boards change and move and people have to leave before their intended time is over and whatever, so that there was a workbook, working documents, dynamic documents that can be changed. We discussed that many times. That people could refer to and the city could refer to. And of course, we need the city to go through them and either tell us that we need to throw them away or that um, we need to change some things or that we can adopt them. And so, um, sadly, I had emailed our liaison and we were all supposed to have um, copies of this tonight. Um, but as we learned, she recently is not with us and I did not know that. So, um, Anyway, so this is, we created this workbook to describe things a little more in depth. Um, as you can see, this um, public art theme, application of appeal to theme. We had just gone through a situation where a member of the public at large came to us with a mural for the skate park. And that situation um, was quite fraught with difficulty and misunderstandings and so we wanted to make sure that we had some official documents to help with things like that um, uh, as you can see when when someone comes with a anybody comes with a project we had expected a attached schematic to be um, to be presented and then of course presented to you all um, as you can see, each objective we have um, explained more fully on this page. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry that I misstepped. Um, we wanted to conduct an inventory and assess the public art, assess the condition of, and, and work on a schedule of maintenance because we know that public art needs that. The objective two, to identify future city funding city-funded public art projects, um, meet with city departments, which we have been doing. Um, they've been coming to us, um, designate. Our, our plan was that we felt if we designated a project manager to, to oversee and coordinate each project, not that they're in charge, but we felt that that was a much better way of getting things done. Um, because without someone as a point person, nothing seems to ever quite happen. Um, and that's just been our experience. Um, and then, of course, present recommendations concerning public art. Um, the collaborating with municipal, civic, and um, nonprofits was to cultivate partnership in all sectors of the community about plans for potential implementation of public art, identify opportunities for collaboration, support efforts by local arts organizations, and promote public art, and like specifically we were talking about the, um, the Northport Art Center, encourage and maintain ongoing communication with local organizations and associations of artists, and develop um, uh, a, a local art, uh, Northport Artist Database. Um, the last one, build awareness. We wanted to develop a comprehensive and coordinated internet and social media campaign to promote the city's public art including an app that takes citizens and visitors on a digital tour of all public art within the city, um, continue to plan and coordinate the quarterly city hall arts exhibitions, and develop Northport Artist Recognition Program for proclamation. Um, the maintenance plan was very, very limited because we knew that we would not know what needed to be done um, or how to go about getting it done, um, but just to take stock of what might need to happen. For instance, the, um, the dancing girls by Warm Mineral Springs, that happens to be just one off the top of my head that I know 
could use some maintenance, you know, just from passing it. I know it needs, maybe it might just need to be cleaned. Is it still there? It's yeah, our ours. property. Oh, but it has I been restored see. And is working and which functioning. which is why we felt we needed a list of what is ours and what isn't. So see, I didn't know that. Um, to give you an update, uh, Sarasota County um, did refurbish it, and last I looked, it was it was working, and there's water flowing. And I haven't flowing. been there since the quarantine. Yeah, it's called the Three Graces. The Three Graces. Okay, but that's a that is a good example of not knowing what belongs to us and what does not. Um, anyway, and then here was the anticipated project schedule. So obviously, you all can have uh, this this workbook. Um, Arts at the Hall has an extensive um, planning uh, planning workbook or pages so that um, each year that the whomever is in charge currently, Jamie Nicastro, she would be filling in the current art teachers as those change as well. We want to include all the schools in Northport. Um, I, we didn't notice any private schools other than preschools. That wouldn't count um, or, or it could count in the future. Um, uh, ex what would be happening for the arts at the hall and everything in yellow is things that are changed. This is all, again, samples. This is so that when the next person comes, they have an idea of what's going on. I know, it's craziness. I know. It's, I don't know, it's like a teacher setting up for the substitute. Um, we have a letter. We have a letter for them. Um, again, can be changed. All of these are dynamic. Project manager worksheets with a description, a projected budget, activities. And we have the calls to, oh, here's a project checklist. This came about mostly because the whole situation with, with the skate park mural. Our beautiful, beautiful young friend who was working on that did not know everything that went into it. And this checklist is not even 100% comprehensive, but it gets people started. Um, we also have the calls to artists. This is a mural call to artists. This was the, um, the sculpture one. This is basically what we, exactly what we used for the um, spoon bill. And so obviously things would need to be changed. Um, murals actually, just so you know, cost much, much, much more than sculpture does. And um, the maintenance is much, much, much different. I'm a muralist, so I know. <laughs> um, anyway, so we have that. And, and here's just housekeeping that we're going to keep um, digital documents as well as um, hard copies. We have here what we want project managers basically to do, and so that actually is the end of our strategic plan. <laughs> Please forgive me again. So that is all available through our lovely Susan Hale. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Vice Mayor, do you have any questions? Um, thank you for I'm finish, sorry finishing. about the first no, time. That, that is no problem whatsoever. Uh, to go over that in detail uh, would take more time than we yes, have right now yes. in this meeting. Uh, I think it's a great idea to have processes and procedures. Definitely do. Uh, it keeps the continuity as board members leave and new ones come in. Uh, so I like it. I do know the the young lady who wanted to do the skate park agreed to this checklist. She thought it was great. You know, she saw it back then too. Um, I will state, though that kind of slipped underneath everything. I'm glad it did because when COVID came, we, that would have been right in the middle of that project and it would have had that skate park closed for months and months and months. So um, God, universe, whatever you want to call it, I think was watching out for that project. Uh, so as far as your workbook, I'd like more time Oh, yes. You know, to go over that. Maybe we can give a feedback or something as we look over it. Uh, it's on again. your agenda backup. Just, I know it was mentioned it was going to be handed out, but it is in the agenda backup, so you all have it. Right. Um, 
city attorney, is there any issue with an advisory board having process and procedure booklet? I don't see any issue as long as it's consistent with what you've empowered them to do. Okay. And there's a lot in the current workbook that is not consistent with the code. So once you decide if you want to change that or what you really want the board to do, I don't see any problem. Okay. It's like, I, a, it's I like would, a lot of work. Yeah, well, I would it. think, um, you know, looking at the code and that would come first, and this would be right behind it then. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I think that's all I have on that. This is a lot of work. You guys have pour, poured in a lot of, lot of time into this, a lot of thought. So thank you so very much. Our pleasure. Mr. Merch, did you have any questions? No, not any questions. I'm, I was very impressed on the work myself, especially going through that workbook. You definitely takes more time, and maybe we'll get through that within the next round of stuff when we see it mm -hmm. in six months. And like I said, some of the things that were brought up about the Portis project were things we didn't necessarily realize, mostly because we did the Spoonbill project and made did make assumptions because of that None of them being that we didn't have to come to you for approval. Right now, we understand that. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that the effort was put in, and I appreciate it. So thank you. You're welcome. The only thing is, is if you go to your five-year anticipated project timeline, um, I appreciate the desire to move this quickly with sculptures and murals. Um, I, I would like to see us focus on the tortoise project mm -hmm. and have that be the number one priority mm -hmm. right now. Um, we have to get our funding in place and updated um, for our fund to get more money brought in. Um, as you already stated, murals and those sculptures can be expensive and I, I don't want to deplete that funding source down to zero until after we get a chance to upgrade mm -hmm. it, especially with this tortoise project. And knowing that that Spoonbill project, it, it, the, what is the, what is the corrective measures that may need to be taken on that Spoonbill um, may be costly that I don't know if we're going to have to dip into that. If it can be dipped into mm -hmm. that, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it, that's a huge question mark with the funding. Um, but if I had to make a direction, the tortoises, absolutely, positively, number one. But then 2024, while it seems like it's a very long ways away, it's really only three years, and that's mm -hmm. our 65th anniversary, I would love to have you guys focus on that as the mm -hmm. secondary, because I think that that'll be some part of public art that will attract people here. Mm -hmm. Um, and 65th is right there. So yeah. it's going to take a lot of planning mm -hmm. um, because it's it's one of those go big or go home kind of projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think that if if you were to look at those five things, I would pick just the, the tortoises and the 65th anniversary as, as the focus. But um, that sounds th again, I'm, I'm not in charge. It's, mm -hmm. it's the will of the board. Mm -hmm. um, so... I, I don't know if we need to kind of have them get that direction while because I'd hate to have them sit in limbo, especially we don't even know what's going on with the arts within City Hall mm -hmm. um, for the schools. Um, right now, they're, they're, I miss the art in, in second and third floor. I, I don't see any of it. It's been empty for a very, very long time, and that was one of my top things I wanted to talk about and find out why. Uh, first floor has everything. First floor is, is all <coughs> arts, but we don't have anything on second or third floor. I think well, it's just quarantine. Closed. Well, oh, I, oh, I totally oh. understand that. But it, it was even before COVID, and um, oh. it seems like the first floor, the, the art stayed up, even though City Hall was closed, which I, I get. I can tell you exactly why. Because we were preparing for the student art show, and until we did this schedule, the first floor remained with local artisans and the students only did the second and third floor. So we were literally in preparation for putting the student art up when all schools closed. And so then it kind of 
fell in that, you know, vortex of quarantine and stuff. Now that the holidays are literally months, two months away, um, are there plans to do something on second and third floor for the holidays? You guys do the holidays. We decorate the holidays. all three floors for the holidays. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so Donna um, has done that every year. Okay. And there are, I see it on there. I see it on there. That said that we did it. Yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, said fourth City quarter. Said. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm it's okay. First quarter will go back to Northport Art Center, and they've agreed to fill first, second, first and second floor, and spill over to third. So when I read City Hall employees, I thought it meant like. Howard Art. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Well, technically, it is. Technically, it is. That's is art. The artist. But mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you all don't want me drawing no. anything. No, it's the decorations. Good. Yeah, that tradition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would need me to put a big explanation what stick people actually are if I was to draw. <laughs> so, all right. It's an arm. This is a leg. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so thank you for that. I don't know um, what all you guys are going to be focusing on. I know the first quarter is coming up, and then you're going to start with the Arts in the Hall. Um, yeah. You guys meet once a month or once, once a month. month? Once a month. So that's why we got to have project managers so we can get things done. So, yeah. But, but to that, obviously, the Arts in the Hall will go, and that's where that month, that budget, that what was it? I don't know. Four thousand dollars. Some, some of the, a lot of that money goes toward that. That's an expensive project, but um, you know, if if we're moving forward with, um, we we have to know. You guys have. To, I guess the whole thing is, without knowing what to do, we came up with things to do. <laughs> so and like I said again, because of doing the Spoonville project, we made an assumption, and because. The um, young lady who came from, what as as a citizen at large, came to us with the project, and then it we were getting messages from. I got a letter from the city manager. Let's get on this, and you know. So the assumption was we were in not in charge of those things, but we were the the motor that made those things go. And so now tonight we're learning, and um, like and like city attorney said, it made. You may make us that, the motor that makes that run. We still know that we don't necessarily turn the key. But if someone's got to do the, the work behind things, because it does take a long time, and you are 100% right, that anticipated schedule is a lofty schedule. But without anticipation, you know, nothing can happen. But to concentrate on two would be amazing, because obviously now we've figured out that the tortoises definitely won't happen in 2021. It was going to be, it was going to be a tough sell to get that done if I started, if we started tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? But it could happen. But doing 2022 and what 2024, that is very realistic. Well, the goal if we get, you know, the goal for tortoises. So the city manager comes back in yeah. six months. That's April or sooner, mm -hmm. um, and it may still. We, we, you know, once we get once we get that meeting under our belt, then we can move it along to the next yeah. stage. Yeah. Um, so you are aware that you've got the forty two hundred for the art advisory yes. budget uh -huh. for that the, goes toward framing for certificates, the framing and yeah, the, the mat food, and yeah, all that kind of okay. stuff. Yeah. I just want to make sure that yeah. that had been communicated with you. Yes. We just approved the budget. Just got approved last mm -hmm. month. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that was communicated. And that was the that was the only thing we understood that our budget really went toward that the other public art we always understood that that was coming from somewhere else that the fund. The fund. Yeah. Um is anybody oh commissioner much go ahead. Oh um, yeah well a lot of it just got discussed. I was going into the the 21, 22, and about your list of objectives that they were trying to do and push through their five-year plan and how where this with the tortoises may not even be coming to fruition until 22 because of procurement, getting the artists in, getting them placed. It is going to take time because we won't even be meeting again until April, May of 21, and then going from there. So they may even start going out 
in 22. So in 24, if that's the 65th, you're right in line with planning for that one as the next one. That's all I was going to comment on. It was a good idea, and, but government does take time. Um, the only other thing that I, I wanted to remind everybody on, on, my, on the commission was we were talking about activity centers, and that was in January, I think, of 2020 when we were talking about activity centers and we wanted to have the art board come up with a, I think vice mayor called it the face of that activity center. Um, and I don't know if that is something we still want to tax them with. That might be something we could give them that kind of direction today um, and have that discussion with them as to what that means to us. But this is something that we had to discuss um, almost a year ago. So. Um, I just didn't want it to fall off the planet and then us go, wait a minute, we, we were supposed to have the art board uh, come up with the face of the activity centers. Yeah, I think that would fill in some of the gap of their timeline between the projects. Uh, so I think that's a They a would good need idea. to know a little bit about what What that, we were talking yeah, about. What yeah. that entails if you want to fill them in, Vice Mayor, because I think it was your phrase that explained it as... I think probably Inside allowing, station. yeah, getting a copy of the video or something and forwarding it to them would, would hear the entire thing. But each of the activity centers has a name, and we just want it to be recognizable instead of saying activity center one is Mediterranean. Uh, and so with Mediterranean, uh, you have this vision or this concept pops within your mind as to you know, what that may look like artistically. Uh, so that was kind of what I was thinking was, you know, driving something like that um, from the name of each of the activity centers gives them a face, gives them something to recognize, just like your, um, your little logo. Maybe there could be a logo, artistic logo for each of the Let's activity see, centers. Places for the mosaic. Exactly. Too. Mosaic at the outside, <coughs> the wall. Yeah. Or, I mean, we talked about toppers going on street signs. It, it could be the topper on the street sign, mm -hmm. the, the art, you know, that goes with that name. And if you come up with better names, then panacea or <laughs> something else like that. <laughs> you could uh, you could you know, make those recommendations to us also. Thank you. Possible that we're gonna be going through this process now for the for the tortoises. Maybe we could use this period to work out all the kinks so that future ones can go through it a little more smoothly and quickly. I think, I think taking notes and writing process. something like your workbook as you go through that, I think would be very beneficial. Well, we have to go through a lot of steps. With exactly. The city, right? Had somebody Can written all of the steps move down. that along anyway? Well, if somebody had written all the <laughs> steps of what we did for the spoon bill, yeah. we wouldn't be guessing right now. Ah. We so, did. That's why we have the workbook. Okay, so those types but of... But we don't know if we're allowed to do it. Well, in conjunction with mm -hmm. the city. So if those steps were, you know, as a project is done, you write down what that was. That is a reference. That's a file that you keep, and you're able to go back then and see how you orchestrated that, how it was able to come about. So those types of things I would definitely recommend for the future. Um... Do we need to give a direction to city attorney or city clerk or city manager to bring back the ordinance on the art advisory board so that it can be updated and have a larger discussion on that in the future? I would say after the new commission comes on, yeah. So six to nine months. Do you, do you want them to put it on or do you want, I think city manager raised his hand. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the first question would be is, do you want us to just bring an agenda item so you, we can bring to you all um, basically a blank slate of saying, what do you want us to add for the powers? Because um, 
the direction you're giving to your advisory board, or do you want us to take a stab in the dark? Um, obviously, my recommendation would be to have a generic agenda item, and you say, hey, can you task them with these additional items? Um, the city attorney might have something she wants to add to it because she's normally the one that drafts these things, but that would be my recommendation. Well, we may end up uh, just not changing a whole lot about it, but stating in it clearly that we can give direction to staff to utilize the assistance of the board the way we did tonight. So it may be that it doesn't end up changing a whole lot, but we clearly identify how they have their part in a project. It does require two readings. <clears throat> so if you want to avoid having a discussion plus two readings, <clears throat> we can bring you some general language to first reading, mm -hmm. and then you can tweak it in some um, suggestions. And you can provide you know, clarification or you know, more detail feedback there, and we can revise it between first and second, provided you give us enough time to, to work between the two readings. Well, I'm sure, too, that the Parks Advisory Board um, very similar, very active board, and they they do similar recommendations to the city commission. Um, maybe taking a look at a few of the advisory boards, um, how they're formed in their roles and responsibilities might be able to help bring this one up to a little bit more current expectations. And, and yeah, I did take a look at the other advisory boards, and they're all a little bit uh, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. They're not really consistent but you know some of them have kind of a general clause at the end that says something like and anything else that the commission you know Correct. tells us to do along the subject matter <laughs> but, but some of them that. don't have that but then when it lists their their powers and duties they are broader within you know each one so it gives them gives more wiggle room um because i believe the parks that. and rec volunteer on projects and at events mm -hmm. too so um I think that's a good idea. So Parks and Rec, in addition, they have two very lengthy um, lists of powers and duties related to recommendations. And then they have two that are more active, which says uh, power number three is to work with government, community, and business representatives to encourage play and play opportunities. And number four says identify various sources of grant funding that may be available for recreational programs and or facilities and assist in applying for grants for such funds. And I would love to task them with that because they're in the arts. They might know of grants that we aren't aware, you know, so that would be a really good one to add to the list. Um, so. Oh. She reminds me of one of her children. She still <laughs> raised her hand. Well, I'm being patient. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ms. Bucci. I was just going to say that the one thing that we have to remember about that is that there is somebody who works for the parks department on staff. There's no art person on staff. So they can have a more active role. But again, if you want to hire one. <laughs> so I'm teasing. Um, but yeah, there's nobody. <laughs> I have a good job. But I'm just saying that to, to make that happen, you know, there is someone who works in, in parks that is a a city employee, so that might be, we won't be able to be exactly this. Yeah. So let's get a consensus to have city attorney work with city clerk and city manager to bring back an ordinance for first reading to change the code for the art advisory board with general ideas <coughs> and suggestions incorporated in the ordinance. So you want that after the election? Considering it's near impossible think? to do it before it. Do you honestly think you're going to have it done before October 27th or 28th? So no. the deadline was uh, eight <laughs> hours ago. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, obviously, after the election. <laughs> uh, Vice Mayor, is that consensus okay? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, I like your idea of reviewing the other advisory boards. Uh, duties too. So yes, I'm a yes. So we'll add reviewing other advisory boards. Uh, Commissioner Armitage. Yes. All right, uh, City Clerk, did you capture that clearly? Hopefully, I was concise, and that passed three to zero. So we've got that consensus to bring that back. I'm not going to give a time frame, but um, we'll get it to you sooner rather than later. 
I mean, not by October 27th. <laughs> <laughs> We'll we have it. a meeting, what is it, November uh, 6th or something? We'll bring it back to you in November, and if but you want to come back after the election, we can bring yeah. it back to that last yeah. meeting. Yeah, let's bring it won't be sitting until November 24th. Correct. So, so there won't be a problem. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Um, at this time, our agenda has been completed. Um, Vice Chair, is there anything else you guys would like to add? Any comments, questions, criticisms, anything? All right, one, one thing before we go on. Um, City Clerk, do we have any public comment before we adjourn? No. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Luke, uh, Vice Mayor Luke. Uh, I'm gonna pass these down. Uh, I just wanted to give heads up on something. Dee Dee is fully aware of, of what I'm gonna be telling you. Did you give one to Clerk? Uh, no, when it gets passed all the way around, there'll be one for her. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to do one in oh, reverse. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You handed me two of them. I was contacted by um, people up in Sarasota from the Barnick uh, Foundation. Uh, they have a, a program where they want to honor the first 1,000 days of a child's life. And they want to do it in the form of a mural. And you'll see on this letter of what their, um, the basics of the design would be. Uh, and it tells you basically about it. It is, I then brought in the, the art center to this. The arts alliance is involved in it uh, in Sarasota as well as uh, Kelly from the Barnick um, Foundation. Uh, at first, we thought, um, to, you know, as far as buildings for the mural, we thought of kindergartens, you know, these types of things. And kindergarten prep said, yes, they would be willing to have uh, such a mural on their wall. That is Sarasota County, and Sarasota County does not allow murals uh, except for Siesta Key. So we then had to look to the city of Northport because we do have code that states about um, murals within the city. They just can't be on the front of the building. They can be on, on the sides. So it's in process right now. This is the call to the artists. They are, uh, we have an artist, um, at least one, maybe even more within the city who would like to participate in the program. Uh, the, the building, or they would pay the artist uh, $20 per square foot. They provide all of the materials for the artist. And the, the building gets a, a good look to it. So this is, in my opinion, a great way to get murals started within the city. Um, and it's not going to be costing the city anything at all. Uh, something that was exciting to me is... Look at all the young families and the school children, uh, the daycares that we have within our city. And this would be honoring a certain portion of our uh, population also. The Barnick Foundation was very excited. They said, ooh, this is a great opportunity to learn more about Northport and possibly bring um, more sponsorships down here to our city. So to me, it was a win, win, win. Uh, it's in the hands of them. Uh, they have the call to the artist going out until the end of October. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably will paint, um, you know, then before the holiday season or that. But according to our code, uh, the, the design has to come to the commission. So as long as this proceeds, we have an artist, we have a design, we have a building owner who is willing to allow their building to be painted, uh, it will be coming to the commission for them to say yay or nay to the design. Is there any question? And yes, ma'am. Do you, is all the information like what building it will be on, is that decided yet? It is, it is not. It's not? Um, we have a couple of buildings in mind. There's 
um, the wife of one building is really excited. She's not so sure about her husband. <laughs> but they want to see the, the mural. And, okay. and that, that's understandable. You don't just say, okay, here's oh, yeah. my building. Paint whatever you want to on No, but sometimes so, you know which building it's going to be. Well, there is one that is two-story uh, that is being thought about and one that is one-story and is not even a full wall, but it's like half of the building. But they have to get their part um, taken care of, and they will be working with the business owners to get uh, permission. But the, the design has to be presented, and then they will pitch it to the building owners. And then it will come to us as a commission to vote uh, yay or nay on the design. Okay, I'll just look it up. I just, more than anything, you usually like to know the size as a muralist of the space that you're going to, and knowing where the where it is, also the, <coughs> you know, the scenery around it helps you understand and place what you, that's why I asked. I'll bring, but. I'll bring that forward to Kelly, you know, as a response to what, what uh, she has here. Uh, it is in her hands. I mean, this is the foundation's project, mm -hmm. but I'll make her aware of your points right now. Uh, we are hoping somebody on 41 uh, will volunteer the building. Uh, when you're coming in on 41, that's the most traffic coming into the city. And what a great way to um, display art. And the artists that have done murals um, that I have seen <coughs> are outstanding artists. If, if any of you remember uh, the card, the Christmas card that gets lined up on, on City Green during Christmas, uh, the muralist is the one who painted that one for the art center. And it's just spectacular an angel, and it's just spectacular. So whatever the artist, it's there. I mean, 1,000 days is 2.7 years. Uh, so whatever a child learns or how they develop in those two and a half years is what they'll depict within it. Uh, it's up to their imagination, their design, their creativity. Um, could be the child sitting on grandmother's lap, reading a book. Could be learning to speak. Could be learning colors. Could be crawling. I mean. Could have spaghetti all over its face. There you go. That's a good <laughs> one. high chair. The fingers. <laughs> so, I mean, I just wanted to give everybody you know, uh, a heads up to this. this. This just came about, and I'm excited about it. I'm crossing my fingers that it will come through because it's a great way. As Laura brought out, murals cost a lot of money, and if somebody else is going to pay the bill for a mural to be in our city, uh, yeah, I'd love that. Well, thank you for sharing that, Vice Mayor. I'm sure... Um Art board will help get word out. I know it's only it has a two week deadline, but still, it's uh... that's tough. <laughs> well, it, it's, but yeah, it it it, it, it is, is what enough. it is. Uh, and I, I mean, I think several will be applying. I'm sure. In, in 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 a heartbeat. Yeah. And to my knowledge, it's only city of Sarasota, city of Venice, and the city of Northport. So it will only be one of three within this county. I, I considered it a privilege that they mm -hmm. even thought Absolutely. of doing this in Northport, and this can lead to more things for the city in the future also. All right. So if there is nothing else, city clerk, city manager, city attorney, anything, our board, Ms. Nicastro, your board, anything else? Well, thank you very much for a very productive meeting. Um, appreciate it. I hope next year we do it sooner than in, in time for budget, but that'll we'll have another joint one sooner rather than later. Hopefully, and, there's no COVID. Yeah, I think it. what was scheduled for before that last. Yeah.
All right. No swine flu, nothing. Sorry. <laughs> so it is 8.09, and we are adjourned. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you again for coming and for participating.